Hi, do you want to make 3D stuff in Desmos? Well, you probably do because you read the title of this video. Enough rambling, let's begin. First of all, let's make some points in 3D space. We'll define some X values, Y values, and Z values to represent our points. Use an underscore to get the subscript thing. Let's make these points the vertices of a cube. We'll make the Z values more positive than the X values and Y values so the cube appears in front of us. Oh, by the way, we're using a Y up coordinate system. Y is up, X is right, and Z is forward. Anyway, we've got our coordinates dealt with. However, we're not done yet because we can't just display these 3D points on a 2D screen. We need to get rid of that extra D. This is the job of the projection function. We'll use a very simple perspective projection function that just takes the X and Y coordinates and divides them by the Z coordinates so that far away stuff, i.e. stuff with a big Z value, is closer to our vanishing point, which is the origin. We then need to actually use our 3D point data on this projection function, so let's make the variable projected vertices. And there we go, here's our cube. But I'd like for the camera to move. Let's define a camera X, Y, and Z, and we subtract each of these from the coordinates and we can move. Let's get it to rotate as well. This will be a bit harder. First, create a point to represent the rotation. When you're done, moving the point in the X direction will rotate like this. Moving the point in the Y direction will rotate like this. You can think of these rotations in 3D space as two separate rotations in 2D space. In 2D space, rotate a point X, Y around an angle theta. We use this formula. We can create variables to represent the X, Y, and Z coordinates after the first rotation, calling them X first rotation, Y first rotation, and Z first rotation. Our first rotation will be the one that rotates left or right. Viewed from top down, this looks just like a regular 2D rotation. We apply these 2D rotation formulas to the X and Z axes rather than the X and Y axes. Now we do the second rotation that allows us to look up and down, creating three more variables to represent the vertices after the second rotation. This happens to the Y and Z axes, so we do their 2D rotation formula, except we do it to the Y and Z, not X and Y. You might need to make the angle negative for one or both of these to get it rotating in the right direction. Oh yeah, remember to project these new rotated coordinates now that you've done this. Anyway, now you've created a 3D camera that you can move and rotate in space. But wait. These are just the points of a cube. Don't cubes look like this? Let's fix this. We can make the cube out of triangles. We first need to define which vertex we're using for the triangles. I'll number the vertices like so, based on their index within the vertex lists. That way you can see which vertex corresponds to the first vertex in the vertex list, the second vertex, third, etc. We then define an index list, a list containing what vertex indices we'll be using for the triangles of the cube. So it looks like that the vertices 1, 2, and 3 are the first triangle, so I put 1, 2, and 3 into the index list. Then it looks like 2, 4, and 3 are the second triangle, so I add 2, 4, and 3 to the index list as well. Repeat this process for every triangle in the cube. There should be 12 of them. You'll end up with something like this list of 36 vertex indices over here. Now we can make some polygons. Desmos has a neat feature called list comprehension where you can run a function for every element in a list. For instance, 2i for i equals 1, 2, 3 evaluates to the list 2, 4, 6. Now the cool thing about list comprehension is that you can use them to build polygons. Polygons are made up of a list of points and display like so. You can use list comprehension to build up lists of polygons. Let's make one that draws our cube. First of all, let's make a list comprehension with this polygon function. Since we have 36 vertex indices and 3 vertices per triangle, that's 12 triangles. Therefore we need to run this over the range 1 through 12. Now let's define the first vertex in each of our triangles. It's going to come from projected vertices. Which vertex? Well that's going to come from the index buffer, since the index buffer tells us which vertices make up a given triangle. We're in the index buffer? Well since a triangle has three vertices and therefore three spots in the index buffer, we need to get every third element of the index buffer. Thus we put 3i in here. However, since i starts at 1, 3i starts at 3. We want the first index, which is 1, so we have to subtract 2 from 3i. Getting the other three indices is relatively straightforward. We just repeat what we did, except we subtract 1 for the second one and subtract nothing for the third. And there's our triangles. Anyway, that's it for this video. See you later.